Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we will be going over some stealth changes that were made with update 7.1 on Tuesday and that were not mentioned in the patch notes or shouldn't even be in the game yet. And that applies to the first point because here we have a new player card background for the upcoming stadium map that is called Full Circle. It is already visible in the game but can't be unlocked right now simply because the stadium map is not available yet. <laughs> but it will be released on April 30th. And then you can also unlock the player card. And that's similar to all of the other player cards we have that are connected to maps. You simply need to visit two locations on Stadium and then the card will unlock. This is the World Cup banners as the first location and the top seat row as the second one. But you don't need to memorize this now. I'll give you another heads up and show you the exact locations once the Stadium map was released. A player card background you can unlock now, however, is the new Friday Night Battlefield card that was also added with the last update and is called Friday Night Commendations. To unlock it, you simply need to participate in 15 matches of Friday Night Battlefield modes. These are available every Friday, like the name already suggests, for 24 hours and usually have their own tab on the start screen, so you shouldn't miss them. Simply play the required amount of matches and the player card background will unlock. In addition to this, there's also a Friday Night Battlefield weapon charm available that is called Friday Night Veiler, but this was disabled again shortly after the update went live because the requirements that were shown for unlocking it were not shown correctly. It will return in a future update, however, once the criteria was corrected, but for now it's not available anymore. Shout out to Dead6 and Battlefield Bulletin here for finding this new stuff and also for taking screenshots of the weapon charm before it was removed again. That's always very helpful for me. Next up, we have a new edit loadout option in the pause menu that you might have spotted already and that you can enter by pressing escape on PC or the start buttons on controller. And this new option redirects you to the class editor. So when you wanna change your loadout while you are on the map, you can click on this now and get to the class tab. Not sure why this was necessary though, cause you can simply click directly on the class tab from the pause menu, but maybe some new players were confused about about how to edit your loadouts while on the map. I don't know, it was added. And in addition to this, the AI in Hazard Zone now has full health and not only 60 to 75 health like it was before. And the elevators on Hourglass in the mode Team Deathmatch are now permanently locked. But that only on the side, cause I think it's not that important for most players. What I recognized when editing the weekly news roundup with the comparisons of the visual recall changes is that the little display on the side of the G428 Battle Pass skin that shows the current ammo count of the weapon was changed and looks a little bit different now. Here's the comparison before and after. And this also applies for the AK24 skin that you can unlock as tier zero reward of the premium battle pass. And there are probably more weapon skins in the same design that I don't have or haven't found where the display was also slightly changed. And as another little side note, Liz has her Grom patch back in the Demos specialist set. So in case you have this one and you were wondering why it looks a little bit different now, this might be the reason. Thanks to Dead6 again for finding this kind of stuff. Moving on to the next point, we have the scope glint and the question if it was removed from the Raven 4 times and PSO 5 times or not. Cause this was part of the patch notes of update 701 already, but hasn't made it to the game back then. So after update 71, I tested it again and indeed the scope glint was removed from the Raven 4 times. So you can use this optic again without giving away your position. The PSO 5 times, however, that was also mentioned in the patch notes does still glint. I don't know why they made this decision, but maybe they changed their mind last minute before the last update and there was reason why it wasn't included, even though it was in the patch notes. As for the two hybrid optics, Ghost and Target AT, they do also not glint, of course, I've tested them as well. So now you can use all optics up to 4.5 times zoom without any scope glint and every optic with five times zoom and higher dose glint, which also includes six times thermal cause some of you have asked this. However, there's one exception from this rule and that's the ACOG four times, but only on the SVD. 
On all other weapons, the ACOG doesn't glint. And I'm sure this is not intended and they probably just forgot about this weapon optic combination when making the changes. So there's hopefully a fix coming with the next update. But what we still don't have is a hint to the scope glint in the description of the optics. So for new players it might be hard to figure out which scopes they can use without glint and which ones not. And I think this would be a good addition that DICE should still make with one of the last updates for the game. Simply to make this whole scope glint topic more transparent. I mean, it is more logical now than it was before. 5 times and higher does glint, everything below doesn't, except for the ACOG on the SVD. And there is no difference anymore between normal and hybrid optics, because it was always pretty hard to explain the logic behind this. Why did 4 times Raven glint and 4 times Ghost not? Anyways, what's still missing is to mention the scope glint in the description of the affected optics. Once they add this and fix the SVD, everything's perfect, at least on the scope clint side of things. And that's actually the perfect transition to the next topic, because there are still things that were not fixed with this update, unfortunately. And the first one is the XO Smart optic, because here the numbers that are shown within the optic are still completely messed up. That's a bit of a shame, because I think it's a very good optic, even though it's only available for a handful of weapons, but it's really hard to convince people to try it out when it's broken or even play it yourself. So I hope this gets fixed in a future update as well. Then the new map Haven is still not available for the portal rules editor or for the mode team deathmatch, even though they said it would be coming as TDM map, but in portal it's not available. Liz rocket bug was also still not fixed and still glitches for some players, even though it was reported many, many times already. You can see an example here of what it looks like if you don't have the bug yourself. And in addition to this, some players still cannot see their friends that are online in the socials tab of the game. And because of that can also not send out invites or play with their friends, which is a bug that was only introduced with the last update. But DICE is aware of this and is working on it. Once it is fixed, I'll let you know, so always keep an eye on the weekly news roundup on Tuesdays. What you can do in the meanwhile is to try and join your friends via EA app or through your friends lists on Xbox and PlayStation. This should work. And another tip from the chat of yesterday's stream, make sure that your EA account is connected to your Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, NES or whatever you play the game with. That might be helpful as well. And as a last point, I have to talk about it again, I'm sorry, but the matchmaking improvements that were teased for update 6.3 and then moved to update 6.4 and so on, were still not part of this update. And by now I'm honestly wondering what happened to them? Were they scrapped? Will they still be added with one of the next updates? Are they still testing them? Because that was the reason they were moved to a later update in the first place. Or are they even still existing? That's again the level of transparency and communication that I had already criticized in my video about the end of life service for 2042. Just talk to us. Not talking to the community is not making it any better. Quite the opposite most of the time. And when you usually play the normal conquest or breakthrough playlists and not the time limited ones, it still feels like the game only has 3 or 4 maps and not 18. And now we could discuss the importance of a server browser and of a real map rotation to solve this problem, especially for the regions where the player base is pretty low. But I spare you this monologue because I think we have talked about this more than enough and also gave it as feedback more than enough. I'm just hoping they learn for the next one and include features like this right from the start and also a proper matchmaking. However, for 2042 I can imagine that after the end of live service in June, some regions will not be able to play the game at all anymore. Thinking about Australia and South Africa here for example. And I'm wondering if we might see any features still coming to the game in a future update to solve this problem. Maybe in form of these matchmaking improvements. Let's see. However, and that was it for the stealth changes already, you might recognize that not only the content but also the updates are getting a bit thinner already and I'm sure this trend will keep going on until the end of the season and beyond. And I'm actually missing the little nice mechanics that they used to add alongside of these updates, like the smoke grenades extinguishing fire for example, that always made these updates a bit more exciting. But since we are going towards the end, stuff like this might not happen anymore. I'm always open for surprises though. Anyways, 
If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like or a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching, thanks to my members for the additional support. I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.